I feel like guard retention usually is taught with some sort of finesse leg movement and you need a little bit of dexterity or mobility but um, lately I've just been trying to do things more like that. It's a little more just uh, universal, universally effective. Now, not all guard situations are gonna be more like crushing, like pin their hips and pass. That's a, th this is a perfect opportunity for this kind of stiff arm defense on one of the sides of my head. But then there's also situations in guard passing where it's not a slow kind of pressure pass, but something just happens like quick and smooth, like maybe Gannon pulled guard and I just immediately hit one of these like hand on hips rotation type movements like that. And so there was no opportunity for you to really grab that. You're just instantly in a position where you're being passed. And in those situations, you do have to do like certain hip switches or different movements with your body where you do a full like 180 twist. Because if he just lets me do this, he's gonna rotate all the way out there and I'm, I'm gonna be on his back. So he would have to, as I push, like hit a hip switch to face me again and then do some sort of movement either with his leg or with his hand, okay? So I'm gonna show you um, one thing you can do again and kind of just demonstrate it there, it there a little bit. So when this happens, I wanna have my legs engaged still and anytime someone does sort of one of these like steering wheel style passes, and these happen with Toriandos, like if you go ahead and do Toriando, like this can happen with Toriando, it can happen with over under. If he has kind of a good over under position and he walks my leg through like this, there I would get passed. So all of those sort of situations where he moves this way and then twists my body and st steering wheels my legs out of the way, you'll find that you have two options. One option, go ahead and do it slow. One option you would think would be to like bring your leg over. And sometimes I do this. I would post on the shoulder and try and bring my leg over. But this doesn't really set me up in a very good position. I'm not back in a guard. I would just have to kind of follow through. But if he's quick, he may like drag me through here and come to the, the other side. So it's, it's kind of prolonging the inevitable. And if it does work, you're still giving your opponent a chance. And then there's other situations where maybe instead of grabbing high at my knee, he grabbed a little bit lower on my pants like this so that when he does the same movement and I try and bring my leg over, he's just able to block it completely. And if I continue to do the same thing, he go ahead and follow through. If I don't get that leg over, he will pass. So th this one is a little bit of a gamble trying to do these like leg recovery motions for two reasons. One, because he may be able to turn that into a passing chain and two, because he may just block it completely and then you'll just be stuck. So something that'll work against the, all of those passes we just demonstrated almost all the time is instead of posting with the near hand, go ahead and do it slow mode again. If I post with the near hand, we enter that situation I just described. But if I post with the far hand like this and then do the same motion with my elbow, as Kanan continues to move around me, I'm able to plant my legs and kind of redirect his weight down because I turned away from the direction he wanted to rotate me. If I hadn't done that, I'm gonna end up facing this way, right? Here, he would drive in, and he would rotate me this way. So I know he wants to bring me that way, so by bringing my left hand over, at the same time, I plant my foot that he's kind of expecting it to go up high maybe, but he's pushing it down. Go ahead, here. So he expects it to go high, but I just don't do this conventional defense. I just plant this foot instead. He, he's thinking it's gonna go this way and he's ready for that. So I'm just gonna plant it down and just go across. And this cross control is very, very powerful because even if he manages to like hop to my, to my back again, go hop to your right again, other way, yep. Here, I'm still in that kind of same scenario we just practiced. So do you see how those things kind of connect? They're two different movements, but they also they function on this kind of same stiff arm principle. So this is a very powerful one to learn, just being here and not necessarily always, let's rotate back this way, not necessarily always relying on your legs as your primary recovery movement or your recovery frame, but using your arms and the ability to like get up also. So I'm gonna show it one more time. They're gonna grab and you're just gonna plant and bring your elbow high. And then from here, just come back, just like that. Okay, so it's a long explanation for a very short movement, but I think you need, you need those details to be able to do, to do it, okay? Any questions? Yes? I mean, it depends on the situation. I, I would prefer this, yeah, I think, because it, it, a lot of times it ends up with him being more off balance than me, whereas if I'm doing just kind of basic, like, like, yeah, I'll do this if I'm way early. Like, if I see it coming from a mile away, I'll just do that first, and that's great, but the higher level you're facing, the better the person is, the faster it's gonna be and the harder it's gonna to be to react. So he's gonna do it and I'm gonna instinctively do this 
And if he's really good, he's, gonna, he's just gonna continue from that. And then I have to try and do it again. And now I'm just like losing momentum and he's gaining momentum and tempo. So this cross grip can kind of just stop his aggressive action and just totally reset it back to guard again, which I think is more desirable, but you can do either or both. So let's try it from, uh, do it to this side now. So same thing here, and just plant on the shoulder and grab the material. Grabbing the material and turning your palm into it creates a really nice kind of ledge for your palm. And if he continues to drive into me. Okay, so we're just deflecting his pressure kind of down into the mat rather than into us. And then that allows us to escape our hips. Any other questions? All right, one, two. Your left hand. And it would have been planted on the shoulder. And you're gonna you have to try and get your elbow up at the same time. Your right elbow. You, you, you got it stuck under his leg, so you got to start over. No, you remember I said lift your elbow and use it to get up off the... Yes. So when he goes, you have to be... Nope. That was right at the end, but you got to do that first. So do it again. And you can be flat on your back here. Be flat, flat on your back. Right here. But that was too slow. So you, you just go slower for him. He needs, he needs to, to be slow-mo. So you kind of move, plant... Yeah, keep the pressure, kind of pressure into him. So I just need to get in that elbow as fast as, as, fast as possible. As fast as possible, yeah. Yeah, that's really all it is, you, just to reset. That's it's just a cross, a cross grip with your hand, and that's going to help you reset. That was, that was almost perfect. Just use the cross hand. So, so if he's passing to your left, you're going to use your right hand. And if he's passing to your right, you're going to use your left hand. And the bottom arm is going to help you get up. Just like that over there. That was perfect. Oh, okay. That was very good. Nice, Brenda, that was perfect. Nice, Gil. Yes, once, it, once you get that elbow, it's tough as they drive in, but then if you catch it, it's like you're way out. It's the light at the end of the tunnel.